Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. Um, there's a lot of talk in the car world about the perfect three car garage. You got like your truck and your sports car and your daily, you know, whatever it happens to be. I want to talk about the perfect three horn stable. Not necessarily the exact specific instruments, you know, like a tine bass trombone and a tine contra bass trombone and a tine bass trumpet. No, I'm gonna talk about kind of the general instruments you want to have and why th none of those three instruments are one of these. We'll get back to that later. Now, obviously, we all come from different instruments. Some of us start on a small tenor trombone, we play that forever, um, and we eventually grow into the large better, large bore tenor trombone. Some of us start on like euphonium or whatever. I'm gonna just name the instruments I think you should end up having. So. If you come from bass trombone or whatever, you might already have one of these and you get the other two, hint, hint, um, etc. And again, I'm not really going to talk about um, why maybe you'd want to double or maybe why it's a bad idea. Personally, I think doubling is a good idea because I know basically nobody that gets to play one instrument all the time and it's always the same size instrument. That almost never happens. So I'm going to say doubling's a good thing. And these are the three instruments you should have in your stable. Number one, starting at the top, is some form of small bore, probably straight, um, professional um, tenor trombone. And I say professional because a lot of us maybe grew up on a tenor trombone, so we have like a student model trombone sitting around, which is the same size nominally. It's got like the same size bell and slide and all that kind of stuff. That's great. I think you should probably keep that as a beater horn. But if you want to actually get good at this size trombone, and I think everybody should put some time into this size trombone, I think it's worth having a professional model to just make you want to play it. I think there are good student model horns out there, like the Yamaha 354 is a good instrument. Would I want to practice that and get it out and just shed for like, you know, a couple hours a day on it? Not necessarily, like they don't play badly, but it's not an inspiring instrument. Whereas many of the pro models, the used pro model instruments out there, King 3B, King 2B, Con 6H, um, the Bach 12, 16, etc. This is an LT16M, you know, without the slide. Um, a lot of these used pro models out there are really, really good instruments that make a really interesting sound and are just super fun to play. And so I re recommend having one of those easily for under a thousand dollars that will make you want to play the small bore instrument. Um, one, because that makes you a better player. Two, it makes people want to play with you in real settings instead of just being like, oh, that's that's a bass trombonist playing small bore or even a large bore tenor trombonist playing small bore. And uh, it's just fun to have. Um, I really enjoy playing these small bore tenor trombones. Um, they're good instruments. They're very easy to find. There are so many King 3Bs out there. Really good ones for under $1,000. Um, and I highly, highly recommend having one of these in your stables. Um, not the least because it will probably make you the most money of any of the instruments in your stable. Uh, my 3BF was like 600 bucks total and it has paid for itself many times over in all sorts of different situations. Is it my favorite instrument? You know, I have other instruments that I think are cooler, but that one makes me probably the most money. So and in that regard, an extremely good investment. And I think the same could be said for many other instruments like this. I say get a straight one because most of the time the straight horn is totally fine in this kind of situation. I personally get a lot of use out of the 3B with the F attachment, but not everybody needs that. And I think one of these is better for some things. What's the next instrument? Um, pretty obvious, it's the large bore tenor trombone. Um, again, professional model, preferred, with F attachment. Definitely get an F attachment. If you're gonna have one instrument of this size, you're gonna wanna have the F attachment. Um, it's not really worth saving the small amount of money on one that's straight, um, because you're just gonna regret having a straight large four tenor. You can't play on second trombone. You can't play on third trombone in a quartet. I mean, just so many situations where you want 
this bad boy. The straight large bore tuner is great, and later down the road, maybe add that to the stable. This is where you want to start. You don't need a screw bell. I happen to have one on this instrument. Again, so many used large bore tuner trombones out there um, for like $1,000, even less sometimes, up to like 1500 bucks. You don't have to spend that much money to get a professional uh, used instrument, 88H, 42B. I mean, if you get lucky and find a Holton like this, uh, I would recommend it. Lots of intermediate and professional Yamahas out there. The occasional like really beat up Getson or Edwards or something. Wouldn't necessarily recommend beat up instruments, but if you can get it for a good price, that's a good idea. Um, if you've seen my 50 plus instrument review thing, you know, I've had a bunch of 42Bs, a couple 888Hs. Um, 88 H's, I said three eights, I think. Anyway, um, I've had a lot of them and most of them are just fine. And I've also owned a, an Edwards 350. That was good as well, but it was too fancy for me. And I ended up going back to a 42B and I was totally happy with that. So tons of choices in this segment. Um, it's such a useful instrument. You can play this in so many different settings where the small bore is not appropriate but it is good to have both. Um, many times in my career, I've been saddled with just one or just the other one. And I've had to use like the small bore in settings where I really needed the large bore. And I've had to use the large bore in settings where I really needed the small bore. I think having both is just extremely useful and makes you a better musician because they're usually used in pretty different styles. So next one was this. Uh, last instrument in the stable, this one should be pretty obvious. A bass trombone. Um, it does not need to be this fancy. This one I had custom made for me with all parts that I like and a very special bell, all sorts of things. It does not have to be this fancy. Uh, but having a bass trombone, extremely useful. I would recommend getting this over any other trombone before the bass trombone. I think there are tenor players that can get away with having a um, couple tenor trombones and maybe an alto but then you're really kind of pushing yourself into one direction with your doubles. Like, I'm gonna play orchestral music, almost primarily. And that's not a bad thing, I think, but I, I still say that getting an alto after a bass trombone is probably the move. Um, there are some pretty good altos out there that are not that expensive, but definitely, in my opinion, get the bass trombone first. Um, this is gonna be useful in way more settings. Um, you don't have to, you know, get a call like, hey, uh, I need you to play this thing. Um, only the third part is still open. You have to be like, can't do that. Or maybe it's bass trombone in a big band or so many different places where bass trombone is really the only appropriate thing. And more specifically, with two valves. Yes, there are a lot of cheap bass trombones, professional ones with one valve. They're way cheaper than the two valve ones. And you're like, cool, bass trombone, got it. It's not as useful. I made a video about this before, talking about the cheapest bass trombone. Um, technically, they exist. I do not re recommend getting a single if it's gonna be your only bass trombone, because you're going to regret not having the facility of D, D flat, C, B on the second valve. And it's really going to hinder your playing, especially when, if it's a double and you're not putting that much time into it. You want to just pick it up and be able to play those notes and not have to think, oh, I'm playing in E because I have to pull out to E and just, just get one with two valves. It will be the most expensive instrument of your collection unless you start it on tenor and you have like the $5,000 Shires or something. Um, the bass is going to be the most expensive. I'd say right now the minimum price I'm seeing like acceptable bass trombones for is kind of like $2,300, $2,400. And most of them are nearer to $3,000. Yes, it's a significant chunk of money, but if you play enough small board trombone, you'll uh, make all that back up. <laughs> um, and I think bass trombone is just a really healthy double to have. It's a farther away from the tenor trombones than you might think, but still a trombone. It'll just make you a better musician. Um, so I highly recommend some kind of used professional double valve bass trombone gets in 1052, 1062, 3062, um, a Bach with two valves. A lot of these are instruments that I personally wouldn't buy, but that's because I play 
At a higher level, I've had a million bass drum loans. I'm, I'm more picky. If you're a doubler, honestly, take almost any double valve bass drum loans. There's some older ones, um, the Reynolds Contempora with like two valves and stuff. Um, older horns that don't have split triggers. Um, but in general, I would probably buy most double valve bass drum loans because they're going to get the job done. And later down the road, you can upgrade if you need to. Now, what do you do after you have these three instruments and you feel reasonably competent at them? Um, well, several different things you can do. You can get into valves if you aren't, weren't already doing that. Um, euphonium is a good double to have. I'd say it doesn't get played that often. Um, when it does, it's pretty cool to play, um, but you're not gonna be like getting calls for this left and right. Um, in my experience, maybe other people do. Um, I, you know, I have like a bass trumpet and a contra and all these other really kind of like obscure doubles on the ends of the spectrum. If you are a tenor trombonist, you're into the orchestral thing, alto trombone is a great thing to get into. And you can find pretty good altos now for around a thousand bucks, a little bit less, that are great. The JP Raft alto is quite good. I had a friend who just got one. Um, but after that, you can just kind of branch out slowly and uh, feel what you want to do. Now, one instrument that I talked about earlier that I do not recommend right away, which some people might disagree with, is a medium bore tenor trombone, um, specifically with F attachment, because I think it covers a lot of bases, um, because it's a jack of all trades instrument. Some people say, oh, you can just use this in a big band and you can use it in an orchestra, you can do all sorts of things with it. I don't think so. Um, I think because it is a jack of all trades and it is flexible and does a lot of things, it doesn't actually do those things very well. I think about gigs where I've used um, small bore trombones lately, where I've used my large bore, and in every case, you know, I think about when I've used my small bore, I'm like, no, nope, this would be too big of a sound, it would be too much effort, um, and just not really the right move. Or in the orchestra using the large horn, if I use this instead, I'm like, no, nope, it would sound a little too small, maybe a little too bright, high dynamics, be hard to blend with the large tenors next to me. So again, I really wouldn't replace those two instruments with just this. This is an instrument that I recommend after you have like an established stable and you can find uses for it. And even now, I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna use this that much. I really enjoy it, I used it for teaching yesterday. Um, but that's a pretty edge use case where one of those other instruments would do just fine almost every time. So medium bore tenor trombone, I love it. I think it's really cool. Not what I would recommend as part of like a two horn or even three horn stable. Something you add on after that. So hopefully that fills you in if you're thinking about doubling, you're playing one instrument right now. Those are the three instruments I recommend. Small bore tenor trombone, professional model, professional large bore tenor trombone, and a bass. All of them used if you can, and if, especially if you need to, if you don't have the money, and uh, all hopefully in good shape. That's all I got. Bye-bye.